Classic Ristos is proudly brought to you by Shannon's Insurance, where you can be a member of the Shannon's Club, Pace Farm the Enjoyable Egg, Hair and Forbes Machinery House, and Gun Lake Quarries. Time now for two brands seldom seen. Due to rarity, two brands both known for sports and luxury. One perhaps for outstanding build quality. Either way, they are both a pleasure to host on this week's episode of Classic Restos. Who would have thought that during the 1960s, a well-powered sports car of an ultimate shape and capable of higher speed would have come from the British? At a time of liberated, let your hair down type social attitudes depicting the era of the swinging 60s, an era that was the birth of the British pop music scene and way out fashion designs. Yet for the select few, there was a motor car. A motor car that could put you in the fast lane and round up the hillmans. A motor car that was almost the cost of a basic house at over £2,000 for the affluent enhanced minority. Reasonable pounds when you consider. That amount could have bought you part of an Aston Martin DB4, Jensen CV8 or Lancia. It could have bought you most of an Alfa Geolietta Sprint or the rear section of a Ferrari 250 GT. This car was the E-Type Jaguar. At 14 feet 8 inches, it could almost go down as the Lady Di of classics. Theme styled from the jungle cat itself, it was to pounce on the competition. A car not seen before with its slender, stretched out cat profile. A car that was to become iconic and last 15 years on the drawing boards at Jaguar. From pencil sketches to manufacturing. The E-Type Jaguar was featured by the press 15th of March 1961. And of personal choice, of course, it was considered the greatest sports car of all time by Enzo Ferrari. The E-Type Jaguar was revolutionary in many ways, but it was its style that set it apart from the other British cars currently in production. It featured fed-in headlights, almost ice cream scooping the frontal dimension of the car. It featured a twin exhaust balanced sensibly in the rear where two pipes should be, surpassing others with a singular centre pipe that looked ridiculous by comparison. The car tracked well taking advantage of its longer chrome wire wheelbase, supporting independent rear suspension and four-wheel disc brakes to pull up the inertia in sensible time frames. Further surprising engineering from the British after usually dishing up conservative type vehicle designs laced with mediocre performance. This provided 265 horsepower, 3.8 litre straight six cylinder engine that didn't mind a rev and through some sensible gearing could take this cat through the jungle up to 150 miles per hour. Apparently, the E-Type Jaguar continues to be one of the most desirable cars ever made, attracting celebrity owners such as Frank Sinatra, George Harrison, Roy Orbison and Tony Curtis to name a few, and appearing on such a high-end production show such as Classic Restos is another accolade for the E-Type. Okay, the car behind me is a lifetime's dream of my wife and I. Um, we bought the car quite recently. Uh, the car behind you, behind me, sorry, is a Jaguar E-Type 2 Plus 2 1969 model. Um, the car was kept immaculately by the previous owner and is now in our care and we intend keeping it in the condition that it's currently in. We've been Jag lovers for many years. 
I've honed a number of different Jaguars, Mark IIs, Mark Vs, XJ6s, XJ12s, XJS. The combination was always the dream to have an E-Type. As a child growing up in England in the 60s, I saw these cars driving around then when they were introduced and that was where the love affair started. Of course, the back pocket couldn't afford one in the, as I was a young man in the 70s and 80s. Now in near retirement, this is the type of vehicle we now get to enjoy and drive on the weekends. The two plus two for the vehicle refers to two seats in the front and two seats in the rear. Um, if two people were to sit in the back, they'd probably need to have their legs chopped off. It is generally for our grandchildren or children. We wanted the two plus two because there's a little bit more room for luggage. Um, if we're traveling anywhere, it means there's a little bit more room in the back of the car for bags, not necessarily for people in the car. The love affair with Jaguars is not only mine, it's both my wife and myself. Um, we like the cars because of their styling, uh, their originality. The E-Type is certainly a Jaguar that stands out from many other classic cars of that era. Inside, yes, sometimes the gauges may not work the way you want them to. Sometimes the brakes and the suspension may not be quite what you want them to be. But that's all part of the love affair of owning a classic car. And for all those people that own them, they understand what I mean. They don't drive like a modern car. Um, you have to want to drive an old car. And old Jaguars have their peculiarities, uh, but those peculiarities are what makes the car enjoyable to drive and enjoyable to own. The seats are very well sprung, it's very comfortable to drive. Um, our car has coilover suspension on it, so the suspension is quite comfortable. And when you would see these on the road, they just stood out completely different to some of the other boring styles that England had at that time for their motor cars. They may have been reliable, good transport to get you to where you wanted to go, but beauty was in the eye of the beholder and a lot of them weren't exactly nice looking motor cars to look at. And when these come along, I can remember as a young man looking at them and just being absolutely amazed that that was an English sports car on an English road. And they were beautiful to look at and still are today. What we like about owning uh, a classic car like a Jaguar E-Type is that when we go out for drives in the countryside in the area where we live in the Southern Highlands, other people are seemingly like-minded, they're driving their cars. You get a wave, you get a, you get a chat when you pull up to go to get a coffee. There's a very much a camaraderie, I think, in those of us that love old cars, or just love cars. You don't have to like old cars. You just like cars and you like what they are. I reckon that's what it's all about, just enjoying other people and cars and what we've got to offer in this lovely country in Australia. It's a great car to own. I was 16 when I first saw her. Loved her utterly. She was so sweet, so perfect, still is. She's got a whopping great two-stroke engine under that gorgeous aerodynamic body. Insurance? Well, Shannon's, of course. No one knows your passion like Shannon's. That's why we offer special limited usage rates and even club plate cover. So call Shannon's on 13 46 46. Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. Heron Forbes Machinery House has been family owned and operated for over 85 years and it's easy to see why. Planning on welding? Look at these welding tables and clamps, air compressors and different air tools, sandblasting cabinets, through to spray guns. Everyone is welcome at Machinery House. There are competitive freight rates around Australia and you can buy online at machinerywhouse.com.au. So remember, Hare and Forbes has the range. Nick, good morning. Good morning, Fletch. How are you? Good, mate. Yourself? Very good, thank you. That's good. Nice here at uh, Centennial at the winery here, Bowerall, Southern Highlands, New South Wales. They were good enough to let us in here this morning to use the car park. Thanks for coming along. It's all right. It's lovely to be here this morning. Thank you. Nick, you're welcome. You've got an outstanding car here. 
Yep, it's a lovely 1969 Jaguar 2 Plus 2 E-Type, of course. I think it'd have to go down as possibly one of my, uh, the favourite British car because it's it's so outstanding that it must have been such a high five slap in the face to so many people back in the late 60s or the early 60s in 1961 when this shape first appeared um, compared to all the other designs that the British were making at the time and then whammo, this comes out. I think you're right and that's uh, as a child growing up in England in the 60s um, that's what first drew my attention to the car and of course my love affair with the car stayed until later in life I could afford to buy one. All manufacturers uh, copy other shapes and designs from other manufacturers. Uh, they they get pieces of the car that they like whether it's uh, the front or the rear or the, the top of the, the, the turret. Um, so many different angles of a car and incorporate it into their new designs. But when you look at the E-Type it is so on its own it's it's kind of not close to anything no that's right when you look at it you don't confuse the e-type with any other car you know what it is when you see it regardless of the series whether it's the series one two or three and they all have their distinct differences um, but they are just beautiful cars in the way they're all made nick when you stand at the front and look towards the screen. The bonnet uh, is though it just goes forever. Uh, I, I'm trying to find comparatives here, whether there's a little bit of Corvette in that. We look across the top and uh, look, you can even see Volkswagen in the top of the styling and, and round the, the rear of the car. That's right, there's a lot of design influences, I guess, that have come from cars of that era. And if you're sitting behind the wheel, uh, the bonnet does not seem to end, it just seems to keep going, which is a bit nerve-wracking when you're coming to a stop or you're in a car park. Now the early E-types, Nick, uh, 3.8 litre six-cylinder engines and they went to the 4.2, so what are we looking at here? 4.2, with triple carbs. See, that, that's a, they're big cubes, I mean, a, a four, once you start getting around the four litre and over, you're, you're starting to get into the, uh, into the torque zone there. You are very much so, or, but also for even an engine of its size, um, they do love to rev, and they rev very freely. Double overhead cam, triple SUs. Yep, all of those things. When I'm driving it, I actually forget I'm driving a 1969 car. Beautiful to drive. Nick, it's been an absolute pleasure having a chat with you here today, and thanks for bringing the Jag along. It's not very often that you get to see a car like this uh, on Classic Restos. It's only because of uh, the how often they come along, which, which is not that often. Um, these, these sorts of cars are, uh, are getting uh, fewer and, and, and further between, so it's an opportunity, pardon the pun, to pounce here today and get the, and get the Jaguar on today's episode. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure having you here. My wife and I love owning it, and we've loved bringing you here for you to have a look. Nick, it's been an absolute pleasure, mate. Thank you. Thanks, Fletch. We've really enjoyed being here. Thank you. And now, from the pouncing E-Type Jag through to the sophisticated Benz, welcome to the 1966 250 SE Coupe. A lot of European cars hold different accolades for different things. Mercedes-Benz has a long-standing mainframe of existence encompassed around build quality that could be unsurpassed. Imported Mercedes-Benzes in the 1980s used Australian BHP steel in their coiled suspension. These cars were classed as export quality out of Germany, heavy duty, and if you manage to keep one of these cars in Germany driving under their conditions, you may have had yourself a motor vehicle that could in many ways technically last forever. Here we have a sophisticated, highly appointed coupe an almost looked upon roadster in 1966, combined with an epitome of style and class. With the fashion of the tail fin being only now seen in memory books, a new design was based on the restrained W111 coupe, widened and squared off. The 220SE was superseded in early autumn 1965 by this masterpiece, the 250 SE, which featured the new M129 engine. This engine in 1966 for Benz produced 150 horsepower or 112 kilowatts at 5,500 RPM and it gave the vehicle a significant improvement in top speed, 193 kilometers an hour or 120 miles per hour. 
visible changes included new 14-inch rims, which came with new hubcaps and beauty rings, accommodating the larger disc brakes and new rear axle from the W108 family. Seating was different, and an ergonomic platform of ease rewarded the driver. This is a W111 250 SE Coupe. Um, uh, it's a vehicle that I've loved forever since I was a kid. You know, I've always had a, an interest in cars and this coupe with its um, pillless body style is just blows me out of the water, you know. I wasn't looking for one of these, but I was looking for a restoration project and I was working in Melbourne and I had a, had a lazy Sunday off, so I decided to go for a drive and this vehicle was on the side of the road as I was heading out to the Mornington Peninsula with a big for sale sign on it. What I saw was a car that had been driven fairly hard for the last 50 years or 40 years. Um, it, it, it had been handed down through the family. We had a bit of a discussion. I came home, went back to work, came home and then a couple of weeks later after a bit of negotiation, this arrived on the back of a truck. Uh, I drove the car for uh, about two or three miles and decided that at least I had a running car and then uh, wheeled it in into the garage in 2005 and proceeded to pull it, pull it apart basically. There was a lot of work that I did whilst I was, whilst I was working on the car. The, the timber work was, was done, the chrome, the, the uh, mechanicals. I did a lot of work on those, had the car up on jack stands for what seemed like years. It's equivalent to uh, modern day cars in its performance. Uh, it's got a 2.5 litre fuel injected, mechanically fuel injected motor, overhead cam, four wheel disc brakes, uh, one of the first production cars to come out with the four wheel disc brakes. It's got a four speed automatic gearbox, which in its day was a, a luxury. Most of them came out with four speed manual gearboxes. It drives very smoothly. Somewhat uh, barge-like, if you want, when you if you want to put it around corners, it's got a reasonable amount of body roll. But the body roll is also a consequence of having a smooth suspension. So it it floats along, lovely, really, really does. It goes, it stops. I always get a tinge of excitement when I'm going for a drive in the car. I always park the car where I can see it, not only to keep an eye on the car, but also to uh, just to uh, admire its lines. The classic car fraternity is a great fraternity. It doesn't matter what car you, you drive. Uh, everybody is interested in everybody else's car. And uh, I enjoy the camaraderie and driving the car just puts a smile on your face. From an early age, I knew some cars were a statement of style and elegance. This is my SL63, my most prized possession. Friends say it's more like an obsession. It's my car and I absolutely love it. I'm a motoring enthusiast and Shannon's is my insurance company. Shannon shares your passion. Call Shannon's on 13 46 46. Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. Got a classic? Got to be insured with Shannon's. Why not pick up the phone and give Shannon's a call for a quote and a chat on 134646. And if you are yet to discover the Shannon's Club, there are many hours of entertainment there awaiting you, such as Shannon's own in-house productions, Shannon's Club TV, Legends of Motorsport, Driven, End of an Era, and of course, classic restos. There's also a lot of other stuff that'll keep you amused for a long time as well. There's a fantastic car club directory and an opportunity for you to interact with other like-minded enthusiasts just like us. For more information visit shannons.com.au
nestled away on a five-acre property north of Goulburn, New South Wales, resides Rod, a retired construction manager, electrical engineer and telecommunications technician. Rod travelled many years on assignments around Australia and abroad and now at just 61 years of young, Rod enjoys answering to no one, or perhaps just his wife, and taking in the gorgeous tranquility of his property where his firewood keeps him busy. As Rod starts each day, mug of coffee in hand and a walk around his property, I guess you could say it's a nice time of life to be at. Surrounded by the bird life and nothing but scenery, there's only one extra thing a bloke could need, and that is his shed. And inside Rod's little barn of solitude is something very special to him. Tucked away here in the countryside, who would have ever thought such a gorgeous Benz just sleeps in this shed here? Well, I'd say hardly sleeps, Fletch. I do drive it. Rod, if someone got me in a headlock and said, Fletch, you've got to have the German car in your shed, I'd, I would have to say that I'm a little bit biased here. This is just an incredible car. There's something about... Sitting here in all its exuberance, uh, the elegance of this car, the lines of this car, uh, I think the uh, Mercedes-Benz build quality, it's a culmination of many things which would make this car, I believe, a favourite for many people. It is, and it's become a popular collector's car, the SE, the W111 Coupe. The build quality here, we talk about the interior first. This interior is absolutely nothing short of outstanding. And back to the build quality, even when the seats are tilted forward, the workmanship behind the seats, it's amazing how these little things just raise their head. Oh, they certainly do. The, the timber work, the leather, it all goes together to create an opulent luxury, if you want, when yeah. you're driving. The horsehair pads in the seats give the seats a recline a rocker feel you're very comfortable when you're driving it the attention to detail down to every last screw nut and bolt it's as though it's just left germany this is an incredible example thanks for that fletch i hope it is i've uh, that's what i've tried to achieve over the years reflecting that which is outstanding is the number that were built now we're only talking a small number here, aren't we, of these? Now, I'm not going to quote exact figures because I don't know them, but we can we, we know there was around 5,250 SEs produced mm -hmm. and uh, around 1,600 right-hand drive models were, were produced. A lot of characteristics changed in 1969. The, uh, this Benz was a, uh, an evolving car, uh, like most, but in many ways this two-door car was really starting to leap into its own. Now, we talk about engine here. Uh, we're talking mechanical fuel injection. Uh, again, under the hood, as soon as you, you see this engine bay, it is just absolutely, it is brilliant. Now, when we talk speeds and when we talk in terms of performance of the car, uh, designed for the auto barns, um, it goes along okay. Oh, it travels along at legal speeds. And that's good for 14-inch wheels too. It, it is. Prior to this model, they were 13-inch wheels. This model was the first to come with the four-wheel disc brakes, as I said before, Fletch, and the 14-inch wheels. How many times have you uh, banged your head on the uh, grill when the bonnet's up, Rod? After the 10th time, you learn to duck. And I, I find that even if I'm getting underneath the bonnet of somebody else's car... Yeah. Without the grill, I'll duck. <laughs> Isn't there something beautiful about the, uh, the Mercedes-Benz hood ornament? It's a, a pinnacle statement, isn't it? Well, yes, that's the emblem. That's, that's what you see when you're driving, having that three-pointed star sitting up at the end of the, end of the grill. What an incredible dashboard. Um, can't help but notice in terms of features with the dual, the dual zone heating. Well, Mercedes back in their day, well before this model, had the option for the passenger to set the heat yep. to their requirement and the driver to set the heat to their requirement. 
Right, I want to thank you for your time today and uh, to invite us out here uh, into the countryside and, and feature this incredible Mercedes. I've got to be honest with you, during 2019 I did see this guy and I took his number down. I said, I'm going to be in touch down the track because I, I want to feature you. So, Rod, thank you again. Uh, wonderful car, mate. Well done. Thank you, Fletch. Well, I hope you've really enjoyed this week's episode of Classic Restos featuring two private individuals, Nick and Denise, and their stunning E-Type Jag. And, of course, Rod and his immaculate 1966 Mercedes-Benz 250 SE Coupe. As I say at the end of every episode of Classic Restos, until next week, no matter where you're watching the show from, please ride and drive safe. I'm Fletch, and I thank you very much for watching. You can like and follow us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash classic restos TV and watch catch up episodes at shannons.com.au. Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannon's Insurance, where you can be a member of the Shannon's Club, Pace Farm the Enjoyable Egg, Hair and Forbes Machinery House, and Gunlake Quarries.